Hey everybody, this is Stacking Sats. If you're new to the channel, I would like to welcome you and feel free to subscribe. If you're not new to the channel, welcome back. In this video, we're going to be having a look at Michael Saylor, the CEO of MicroStrategy, who was a guest today at CNBC's Squawk Box. Giga stacker. <laughs> Giga stacker. He added 9,000 uh, coins. I think you're, you're up to about uh, $7 billion worth. I don't know if I did the math on today's price, but out of your entire market cap of $7.4 billion, for a while, in the mid-60s, everyone was up. Everyone had made money. That's not the case anymore. Would you start, you're, would you stack right now? Would you wait for a further pullback? How do you do it? We're going to keep stacking forever, Joe, forever. Yeah, it, the, the issue is crypto is going mainstream. You know, we hit all time highs uh, last week and now there's volatility. Uh, inflation's gone mainstream. Uh, and so uh, what's causing the volatility? The volatility is driven by exchange leverage, the altcoins, some security tokens, DeFi, wash trading, the novelty of crypto and the excessive growth. Right. And that doesn't surprise me. I think people are people have been waiting for clarity from regulators, and over the past month, we got a lot of clarity. The report on stablecoin is telling the world that they want stablecoins issued by FDIC-insured banks. Um, the Crenshaw report is telling the world that DeFi as we know it will not continue. The spot ETF denial uh, report is telling the world that the regulators want crypto exchanges to meet national securities exchange rule and standards. And the infrastructure bill is putting into question staking and DeFi. Now, uh, there's one thing that's for certain, Joe. The world wants two things. The world wants a digital dollar, US dollar, and they don't want 100 billion of it. They want 10 trillion of it or 20 trillion. The Chinese want it. The Africans want it. The Asians want it. They want it from an FDIC insured bank or like. And the world wants a digital asset that's a store of value. And Bitcoin is universally accepted as that common property store of value. So those two things are clear. Everything else is murky. The market's trying to sort out what all this means. We're getting uh, a lot of data points. I, I, I said that earlier about inflation, too. And, and gold made a move. Finally, it, it, it made some, some people are surprised it hasn't made more of a move. And I think you can go back. I don't know. Can you go back a decade? Um, probably. And, and we're a little changed. Is it your view that, that Bitcoin it, it has replaced or will replace or is in the process of replacing gold as as the store of value for most investors? There, is that there is a war. Yeah, there's a war for non-sovereign bearer instrument store of value, and it's Bitcoin versus silver and gold, and, and gold's 10 trillion and Bitcoin is 1 trillion, and it's pretty clear that Bitcoin is winning, gold is losing. Of all the commodities in the world, the only one that isn't suffering from inflation in the last 12 months is gold. You want to elim eliminate inflation, inflation, build everything with 24 karat gold, it won't go up in price. Bitcoin's definitely winning that struggle, and it's going to continue because you can move a billion-dollar block of digital gold at the speed of light. You can program it 60 times a second, and the maintenance cost is much lower. The custodial rates are much higher. So it's, it's pretty clear that uh, digital gold is going to replace gold this decade. There, there are probably some troubling things in the infrastructure bill about uh, you know, how the tax treatment uh, of Bitcoin, but th it doesn't happen right away. Do you think between now and when it, it's supposed to happen that it, it won't happen? Or, I mean, that's an overhang on, on the future of, of Bitcoin for being more than just a store of value, for being much more utilitarian, isn't it? You know, I'm not, not at all troubled with any of the regulation going on right now. The, the safe haven for institutions is to use Bitcoin as a store of value. Bitcoin's the only ethical, technical, and legal safe haven in the entire crypto ecosystem, right? It's more technically secure because of the ASICs and the proof-of-work mining. It's more politically secure because of the support for the miners by the politicians in every jurisdiction. It's more ethically secure because it is universally acknowledged as common property. So if your use case is to buy a billion dollars of Bitcoin and hold it forever in lieu of gold or in lieu of property or in lieu of a stock portfolio, 
that without all the risks of stocks and equities and bonds and, and all the headaches of precious metals, then Bitcoin meets that use case. All of the sound and fury in Washington is going to have an impact on security tokens, DeFi exchanges, crypto exchanges, all the other use cases of crypto that are not Bitcoin. And that's, that's where we'll see uh, all of this settle. And that's why there's volatility right now. So if you were to, to try to look at the eventual adoption of Bitcoin and, <clears throat> and, and divide whatever that is by 21 million, um, what, what number do you think is, is realistic in the future? And I don't know whether I, I, people should never try to do a target and a, a time for when you hit the target because you can't get both right. But what do you, you think it's worth a million dollars a coin someday, Michael? The big idea is is every currency in the world collapses into the U.S. dollar stable coin, and the U.S. dollar is the universal medium of exchange for the world. And, uh, and people seeking uh, a long-dated store of value asset, a synthetic asset, they start to demonetize that second investment property, and they demonetize gold, and they demonetize an equity index. So what do I expect? I expect that uh, Bitcoin, if it doubles every year at the end of the decade, it will flip gold and then it'll, it'll flip monetary indexes, a little bit of bonds, a little bit of real estate, a little bit of equity, and emerges as a $100 trillion asset class. So 100x where it is right now. And when we get there, it'll be 5 to 7% of the worldwide economy. The U.S. dollar will probably replace 150 currencies. Maybe there'll only be two or three left. There might be the euro, the CNY, the dollar. Everything else is probably going to disappear. And then uh, Bitcoin will be uh, the world's uh, monetary index. If you simply want to keep your money and you don't want to express a credit sentiment or an equity sentiment or some property or real estate sentiment. And what if a country decides either, you know, China, I don't know how China is going to react to, to that scenario, or even the United States. Could, is it unstoppable or, or, or getting to that point you just described, does it depend on, on, on what happens with very powerful central I, governments? I think, uh, I think Bitcoin is unstoppable as digital property. I think what you're going to see is, uh, is three classes of countries. Uh, the communist countries that don't give you property rights won't, like North Korea or Cuba, won't let you own anything. They'll probably ban it. Uh, the countries that have weak currencies will have capital controls. They will let you own it, but they don't want you to exchange it or trade it. It's not illegal to own Bitcoin in China. They just don't want you moving billions of dollars out of their, out of their economy. Uh, you see a collapse of currencies like Argentina, the peso is 200 to 1. In Turkey, you see the, the lira is 11. It used to be 1.5 15 years ago. So, so the weak currencies will have capital controls. They'll let you own it as property. And, uh, and of course, in the Western nations where they have strong currencies in the U.S. dollar, of course, it's going to be deemed property. You'll pay capital gains tax on it when you sell it. And otherwise, it's pretty clear across the chasm, it's universally acknowledged as common digital property. And it's the only crypto asset that, that has that standing. That's what makes it the institutional safe haven asset in this space. Content I would once again recommend to subscribe to my channel for more future details about cryptocurrencies. Have a wonderful day.